in Malden. So glad you decided to take the time out of your day to come back and worship with us tonight. Just a few more announcements I have here today. Um, number one is we're going to have a potluck uh, dinner next Sunday morning. So invite your neighbors, friends. Also, we are having a personal worship group tonight after the evening's worship service. Make sure on that. Also, uh, let's remember that if, if you can bring some items for the sunshine baskets, uh, we greatly appreciate it. We've got a couple of bad sunshine baskets that we'd like to make. Our list is growing uh, a little bit bigger there. Also, if you'd like to volunteer to prepare the communion for for the, any month, uh, you can uh, use a sign up sheet in the foyer to do that. Any help would be great. Also want to remember uh, those that are traveling, uh, let, let, let's, let's pray for them a safe journey home. I think they're going to be coming home in the, in the wee hours of the evening. And also, uh, let's, let's remember Deborah Clark as she's not doing well at home. Um, we, we'd like to send her some cards or give her a call if you can. Uh, she'd greatly appreciate that. She's just not doing well. That's Deborah Clark. And we'll remember that Blake Moore is, is homesick. They didn't want to get him out uh, to spread what he had to, to us here at the church building. So that's really all I've got for the announcements this evening. Uh, in this evening's worship service, Brother Joel Foster will have our song service. Uh, Brother Dennis will, will have our lesson and also serve the Lord's Supper to those who may have not had the opportunity this morning. Uh, I will have the closing prayer at the end of service and we'll open with opening prayer for with David Mormon. Let's pray. Father, uh, Father, uh, as I said, it's best to live in that church and I can tell us to the Lord. But uh, those that are there, this weekend, like a child in front of the Lord, can tell us to the Lord. Papa Joel is singing tonight, just like Silas and his children to our church. He can't tell us to the Lord. Papa Kiss and Dicky, we can trust them all. Papa Kiss and Lesson, of our hearts and minds, he can tell us to the Lord. Just a word of God's word, he can tell us to the Lord. Papa Kiss and Terry, Princess Finders, of his officer is a fine man. Have all of them are lost of ones in tourists to the world. Have a uh, 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 missionaries or uh, maybe in tourists to the world. Use my own mom for your lives and just others. Have a rest of my family here at my home. Have a sister family here in tourists to the world. We're the most able tonight to get into us. Let us blood, that cost a cowl. Let that blood get into us. Let it burn. I'm going to make it tonight. We need this building. Get into us. Inside the church. Inside the church. Get 
That's better than having tonight. That sunshine and a nice rain to have it. That's too better tonight. Be in church. Be in the word. Pray for a short. Some little waves. Be in church. Tell me uh, not working this week. Not have hours. I'm going to have it. Uh, uh, Joseph Shit. Joseph the Bolt. Put a shirt in. Says prayer with studio. See you next morning. At late morning. Hope you get well. And the doctors and uh, all the doctors and family members. Say all of them. Oh, get well. I miss my family. Uh, very much. Uh, uh, my mom. She's strong. She's in heaven now. Pray on it. Joe? Six, six. The quiet one, the 
speaks to us nine two three nine two three Sometimes I'm amazed at advertising. The advertising like the companies that say that their food is made only with real ingredients. Now, I don't know about you all, but I'm going to put something in my mouth. I hope there's real ingredients in it. I am not going to go to the grocery store and wonder if that apple I'm buying is plastic or not. I still haven't figured out when they say cheese puffs are made with real cheese. 
because I've never had powdered cheese. I know what their point is, and I'm sure we all do. They're trying to tell us and sell us that their products are not made with processed ingredients. We all know about imitation crab meat. We all know that if you go to a salad bar or whatever and you, you see all the different salads and they have a crab salad, you know that that's not made with crab meat. Not for that price that you get the salad bar. But if you're out there and you're trying to look for something that tastes similar, that looks a little bit like it, you would much rather pay 5 or $6 for that imitation than 20 or $30 for the real meat. But it is imitation. Why the love of imitation? Why would someone even buy imitation? Because it's cheaper than the real stuff. Because it can look like, and to some degree taste like, the real thing without the cost of the real thing. 1 Timothy chapter 4, if you open your Bibles to that. Uh, the book of 1 Timothy is actually a continuous thought process. Uh, when we look in verse 15 of 1 Timothy chapter 3, Paul tells us how the church is a pillar. Now it is the buttress of truth. And then he gives us words of praise concerning Jesus. And immediately we get these verses about what the Spirit expressly is saying. When you look at chapter 4, verse 1, the very first word that connects one thought of what he was just saying concerning the truth. And the truth to what is about to take place. While the New International Version does not translate the connecting word, the idea is that of contrast. The church is the pillar of truth. There are some, the Spirit tells us, that are going to spread that which is false. Verse 1 of 1 Timothy 4, Paul writes, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. The Spirit expressly says. You will not find that phrase anywhere else in the New Testament. Just right here. And what Paul is writing is not a matter of interpretation. It is expressly stated by the Holy Spirit. How many of us would like to see into the future? We would like to know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow or next week, or, or maybe we've got plans for later on in the, in the year, and we would really like to see if all those things are going to work out, wouldn't we? Or we're driving down a dark road at night, it would be nice if we would know what's around that dark corner. In verse 1, Paul is giving us a glimpse into the future. Now, whether those that future is months or years or even decades, he's telling us that the church will see something counter to what is seen that day and when Paul was alive. Now, Paul does not use the idea of end times. He simply uses latter times. And it's quite possible and maybe even highly probable that during Paul's lifetime, some of the congregations will see the prophecy come true. The Spirit tells us that some is going to depart from the faith. In the past, we would simply 
transliterate this word depart. We use oftentimes today the English word apostates. And the time is coming, the Spirit says, in which people who call themselves Christians are going to depart from the faith. They are going to depart from the doctrines of Christ. And they are going to devote themselves to something totally different. Deceitful spirits. Teachings of demons. We need to keep this in the context of a letter. Paul is telling Timothy that the church must be that pillar of truth when it comes to Christ. Yet there's going to be a come a time when the imitation of truth will be desired over the real truth. People are going to depart. There's going to become another agenda. And sadly, it's not that they are sucked in, if you will, into that false understanding. It's going to be that they will turn to that false understanding willingly. You know, we made the point this morning in Bible class in John chapter 3. We talked about how it's difficult for folks to understand heavenly things. And we talked a little bit about how easy it is to want to follow something that's the shortcut. We use the analogy of if you're taking a trip, do you want to take the short way or the long one? And most of us would rather take the short route. But in that short route, by it, typically interstates, you miss a whole lot of things out there. You're going to miss experiences that you would never have. And we can take that into religion itself. And if we start making the shortcuts into salvation, we miss the fullness of God and his promises. The shortcut will never get us to our destination. And if we want to make this a little personal, we have to decide who we're going to listen to. This world is full of departures from the faith. People who call themselves Christians. There are many who lead religious faiths that call themselves Christians. But they listened to something other than the Spirit of God. And there are people who are willing to follow them. It would be really comforting and easy if every Sunday, every sermon was about love and God's love for us and how we're all okay. But what would happen to us? Would we tend to start believing that we are okay when we're really not? That we have to make changes in our lives, but because you tell me I'm okay, I don't need to make a change. Our role within the church is to be so deeply ingrained in truth that we will recognize false teaching when it happens. I realize that Oftentimes the burden is placed on the, uh, the church leadership and, and the preachers to be able to, to see these things, but heaven forbid if they're the ones that's leading the flock astray. So that puts the onus on all of us individually to know, to study the truth to a much greater depth so that apostasy this falling away does not come. The New Testament is filled with these warnings. Jesus in, in Matthew 7 verses 15 through 17 says, Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree 
bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. And in chapter 24 of the same book, verses 4 and 5, And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am the Christ. And they will lead many astray. But we also have other of Paul's writings in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 through 9. And 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. That talks about false teachers and a falling away. <clears throat> this is why it's so important for us to dig deeply into God's word. So that we will not fall prey to this. Paul is giving Timothy some things, some signs to look for. And it benefits us too when we read these words because it gives us the signs too. The type of teaching that's imitation. The signs of, to know whether we are getting the real faith of Christ. 1 Timothy 4 verses 2 and 3. Paul said, though or through this insincerity of liars whose conscience are sealed, who forbid marriage, require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. There are many who have defined this, these passages here, as the Gnostics of the first and second century. But if we are to think that we are limiting our understanding. These folks have gotten themselves so far into their false teachings that their whole conscience has been sealed, burned. It's as if the Spirit of God was pulling at them, but that they were more willing to give themselves over to deceit and the evil ones so much so that they quenched the spirit's fire within them Paul is giving us a couple examples of what these people would teach Paul said that good things that God has done and these people will show them that they are evil the first one is marriage. God created Eve to be a helpmate for Adam. That the two would become one flesh. That they would be so deeply connected in a way that nothing in this world could ever pull them apart. It's an institution that was created as something good, holy, and pure. These people are saying God's design is wrong. They forbid marriage. The idea is that you are more holy if you're celibate and single. That being those things make you a more righteous person. It separates you from the cares of the world and from others. But it's just a twisting of God's truth. It might look right. It might sound right. But it is far from right. And the second one revolves around food. Now that's a touchy subject for some folks here. Right, Barney? <laughs> to sit there and say you can't eat this or you can't eat that. Now, it doesn't tell us what food. We don't know if they're using the teachings from the Old Testament. Were they talking about foods that might have been sacrificed to idols? We don't know. What we know is that they took something that God made good and rejected it. And what Paul is getting at is that these folks are rejecting God's way and choosing another. Buying in the imitation because it is cheap. 
We have a choice. And that's what is so wholesome about God is that he gives us the choice. Who will we listen to? The world is simply an imitation of faith. Something that might look good. Something that might even sound righteous. But its teachings are self-serving and it is counter to God's word. And we can follow that. But it will not lead us to heaven. In the end, it will be destroyed along with those who follow in it. And it will kill you spiritually. You know, it was interesting the other day I was sitting there and recent studies started talking about all these artificial sweeteners. And I gave in to some of those. I, and there's some of them I like. You know, the, the powder drinks and stuff like this, artificial zero calories. They say it's really bad for you. It's worse for you than sugar. And I'm like, oh no. The imitation stuff got me. Don't let the imitations of the Bible get you. Because it is far more deadly, far more costly than grabbing hold of the real deal. Let us give ourselves over to the care and will of God. Let's continue to listen to the sound doctrine that Christ has given us through the writers of the New Testament. Let it point us the way home and help us in that walk to get there each and every step with the Holy Spirit. And we have that choice to make. It's an individual choice. We can choose whichever way we want to go. The church is to be a pillar in the foundation of the truth. Period. If you are not a child of God, we want to give you that opportunity this evening. <coughs> To obey the gospel through repentance and confession, New Testament baptism, you can be added to the Lord's church. And then together we will work and strive together to make our home in heaven sure and remain faithful to the end. If that is your desire tonight, we want to give you that opportunity. And if you are a child of God and there's things you need to make right and with God, and you need to do it in a public way. We ask that you come, as together we stand and we sit. I have a Savior, He's pleading in glory, a loving Savior, though friends be few, and now Good.
peace that the friends of this world never knew. My Savior alone is its author and giver, and oh, could I know it was given for you. For you, I am praying. For you, I am praying. For you, I am praying. Please be seated. For those who do not have the opportunity to the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> As we gather around this table this evening, we remember the sacrifice that our Savior did on our behalf. That he gave us these emblems as a remembrance memorial feast so that we would not forget that sacrifice so that each and every Lord's Day we remember it and we give honor and glory to the one who died for us will you bow with me please and give blessing to the bread our Father in heaven we thank you for these emblems that represent your son's body and we ask your blessings on this bread, Lord, that represents your son's body. And we ask that as we partake of these things, that we remember just truly what a sacrifice it was and that the cost that was paid so that we would not have to pay for it. And we thank you so much, Lord. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we ask your blessings on this fruit of the vine that represents the shed blood of your Son on that cruel cross at Calvary, Lord. A death that you told us would be coming at the beginning of time, our time on this planet. And we're just so grateful, Lord, that through this shed blood that we have been reconciled to you for there was no other way. Only this could have been done. The perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. And we are so grateful that we that partake of this, the fruit of the vine, do so in a manner pleasing to you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. basket on the table for those who may not have had the opportunity to give. Bow with me, please. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the blessings you give us each and every day. For all of the things you allow us to enjoy, all the things that we own and possess. And we pray, Lord, that as we return a portion of these gifts to you, we pray that they will be used in a manner that brings glory and honor to you and furthers thy kingdom here on this earth. And we pray, Lord, that one day the gifts will, have, will stop because of all the riches that we will enjoy in your kingdom forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Personal works group, uh, right after services in the uh, next to the last classroom on the left. If you have an opportunity, you can help. We appreciate it very much. If there's nothing further, would you please stand and we'll be dismissed by prayer. We
you pray with me? Father in heaven, as we come to the conclusion of this evening's worship service, we come in prayer, Father, thanking you for the blessings of this day, thanking you for these opportunities we have had to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, to sing songs of praises unto thee, to gather around the table, to remember the great sacrifice given to us by Jesus, and to hear another portion of your word. We're so thankful, Father, for the church that meets here in Malden, and we're thankful for the work that Dennis and Vicki continue to do. We pray that they would have many more years of service, that they would continue to have their health and, and be able to serve you and serve us here in Malden. Dear Lord, we know that each and every time we go out of our house or turn on the TV or go to the store, Father, we see the, the acts of evil and we see the great fall away that your word says there will be. And we just pray, Father, that as your Christians, as your sons and daughters, that we will continue to have on the full armor of God and that we will continue to stand up to those things that are contrary to, to your word. Pray, Father, that we would each all stand up for the truth at all times. We do pray, Father, for those who are number who are unable to be with us today. Pray, Father, that you give them the strength that they would need to be back with us. Pray that they would continue to consult your word to, for the comfort that they may need. We pray, Father, for those this, this hour that may be traveling home this evening. We pray that you'd be with them, give them safe passage. And we pray, Father, that as we go out to our homes and to our jobs tomorrow, that that you would guide and guard us, that you forgive us, Father, when we're not that shining light that we know we should be. This prayer we ask in this evening is in the strong and loving name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, Brother Mike. 